Yeah, we're going. Yeah, your sandwich. That's what we're here for. We are here with Big Figment. Hello, I'm Janae. <laughs> That's Janae. I play uh, guitar and, and sing. And Peter, nice to meet you. Peter. Oh. Um, Adam. <laughs> Andrew. And Andrew. Okay, well. Let's uh, talk about what you guys are doing. Uh, what kind of stuff are you using here? Okay. Janae, let's start with you. You have a lot of pedals, I've noticed. Like tremolo, chorus, delay, and well, then what, some What is this Line 6? Let's, let's take this a look at this. Line 6? Yeah. This uh, it's the Line 6 FM4 modeler. It's like a, it's got a lot of like synthy kind of effects. Uh -huh. um, the channels that I have in here are, I mostly use for the song Jux. Um, which is kind of like a space lounge kind of feel. Uh -huh. um, and so like to start, I set this loop and use a lot of the, the, the effects on here. And this other one, so like it's got like a it's like filters right yeah yeah i mean definitely this yeah uh this one that like i started out with is, is like a kind of like a, a seeker that's that's like what it is there um that, this electro harmonics pog what is that What's oh yeah with that? polyphonic octave generator so it just gives you different octaves and i think uh so he mostly like hits most of most of the the higher end stuff. So I usually keep like the highs like kind of more in the middle, and like this is the sub octaves. But it gives you a really like nice. Oh wow. Organ like sound. Uh huh. Um, Envelope filter that, that's yeah. kind of like an auto wah. Yeah, right? exactly. Sort of. It's an it's an auto wah, and it, it's definitely like touch sensitive. So like by like how how like hard you attack it. Wow. That, <laughs> that. Oh, that's really cool. So I usually let's see. I I know the the first song you guys played the last time you were using that. I remember. Yeah, that. yeah. The, Kidding. Uh, <laughs> yep. It's really sensitive, but um, I, I I really wanted to like try and imitate like a cat's meow or like <laughs> that, which is the reason for like that key song. Oh, uh, gotcha! Like, <laughs> it's the only song that I use that on, so like there's not too much use for it. But, yeah. Um, what's that coming from? A feedback. Is that from? Stop here. Yeah. I'm muting. Uh, can you turn off that amp that you're sitting on?
Mm -hmm. um, I think we were talking about the, the sparkle drive, right? Okay, shush. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, I have this like drive pedal, this Voodoo Lab Sparkle Drive at the top, and I, I originally got it because I was I was looking for that Ibanez Tube Screamer, which is that green pedal, like really yep. famous pedal that everyone loves. But um, this has the same uh, chip that or op amp that JRC forty five fifty eight chip thing, so it it has like a similar tone. But um, I guess I got it because I like how you could like boost your clean. Uh -huh. um, however, I always just keep that all the way down now anyway, so <laughs> it's like too clean. Um, but I guess like what I use this mainly on or like where it really comes through is the song Peekaboo in the chorus. Um, so yeah, there's that and then I often use this with the fuzz. And this is a ZVX Mastertron Fuzz. Wow. Uh, I think I got it because uh, one of my guitar heroes, Annie Clark from St. Vincent, recommended this pedal. Oh, wow. And you can, it's pretty cool, you can like control the, the subs uh -huh. on this too, so it's a really thick fuzz and the pulse width, but I pretty much keep that square. It's um, pretty cool, I've never seen one of those. Everyone else is uh -huh. going crazy during that part, especially Peter on bass. So. <laughs> And then this chorus pedal, which I don't use that often, except for uh, our last song, "Cooking," which you shot, because uh -huh. I was kind of wanting like a Pixies kind of tone. Yep. So this with the drive, like kind of, and like those two sounds like that. Oh yeah. guitar anyway um, this is a Fender Pawn Shop series uh, Jaguar Rio mm -hmm. um, it's not it's not a classic Jaguar at all it's like the Pawn Shop series I guess they advertised as like being the like the, the guitars that like could have been but there's a lot of really cool tones that you, a lot of variety of tones that you can get from it um, they're like five different pickups uh, we have like humbuckers and single coil pickups and with like a huge difference in sound in between except like this this uh boss digital delay yeah i've seen a lot of people use that yeah. exact delay mm -hmm. you can get kind of like a crazy endless thing going on with those right oh yeah totally i i mostly use it like i like to use this mostly for delays the the green box but i'll use this like with the hold setting to just create like kind of a texture behind or like kind of pulse thing uh-huh like <laughs> like that behind Adam's drum solo so at first it starts like with, with in, like I guess there's kind of a defined time but then eventually like your ears get used to it and it just becomes a texture behind uh -huh. it so that's the point of that nice so it's like you know adding like ambience behind the yeah yeah exactly it's very cool so well, all right well thank yeah. you all yeah. right this Hi. is Andrew and uh, he plays keyboards and trumpet for big figment and uh, what we're going to look at here, it looks like you have quite a bit that we can talk about. Um, first off, I, you're using a MIDI controller, I see. Yes. Uh, and what software do you use to uh, control with the MIDI controller? Okay, so this is called Main Stage 3. And it's literally something you can download off the App Store, the Mac App Store. It's uh -huh. only like 30 bucks. But what makes it worth it? is that you can use the Logic sounds with it. Um, so Like the Logic plugins? Yeah, mm -hmm. the Logic sound libraries. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it, it syncs with that. This is literally just um, a way for a, an Apple product 
to be more performance friendly. It's lighter. You know, that's kind of basically. a knock against Logic is that it's not necessarily as performance friendly as maybe something like Ableton. Right. So this is kind of maybe an aid for Apple users to like, you know. So anyway, so I bought it and I'm still in the process of learning it, but um, basically you can create your own interface. So I created my own interface um, based upon how my keyboard looks just because it is visually um, well, yeah, so you can tell what yeah. you're turning and what's going to affect Yeah, it, right? exactly. Uh -huh. And so, you know, basically you can see I have all the faders here, and they coordinate with the faders here. Uh -huh. I have the buttons, so when you turn the buttons on and off, they go on and off, as you can see that. Uh -huh. And um, so, uh, you move the faders, they go up and down, you know, just like you have the keyboard in front of you. So, and then do you use like, you have like plugins uh, for generating the actual synth tones? Or yes. Are they part of like Logic, the plugins that you use? Yes, so like it? here, I'll get out of the performing. This is the performing mode. And over here you can see all the channels with all the patches. And uh -huh. here are the patches over here. And I just have each patch for every track that we have. So when I go through, you know, I've got multiple sounds that I have split here. And it's a little bit small, but you can see like, you know, in this range of the piano, I have, you know, the voices and over here I have breath evokes. So it's you can split up the piano and it shows you exactly where it's split up on the keyboard. Which oh, cool. is really cool. Yeah, it is. And it's very user friendly. That's kind of why I like it because I'm new at this. So uh, you can go in and you can edit um, your sounds. You know, they have uh, samplers, they have just, every. a lot of them come from Logic. You know, I use the arrows to switch through the tracks. Oh, <laughs> I mean, so you, you actually have the, the different patches programmed. Yeah, the, uh, you, oh, man, there's, cool, yeah. there's really no limit on this. You can program everything on it. Yeah. Main thing with trumpet is that everything else is so affected that sometimes it's just nice to have a natural organic sound with yeah. a band that's all, I mean, minus the drums, or, uh, you know, just electric. Just what? I'm, I'm the wettest instrument. Well, yeah, and like between, <laughs> between the synth and that. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I guess bass doesn't really have much yeah, other than the... I have dry. almost nothing. They're, these guys are dry. But it kind of works that way, because, you know, if you have everybody trying to do this, you know, Effect uh, overload. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's over effect. You have to complement each other, so uh, it's kind of a good balance. All right. So, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for nice. explaining all that. Yeah. So, Adam. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> sandwich so, about there. Hey, yeah. Hey, Let's my, talk about that sandwich. Can I use your real name? <laughs> sure. your real name? Yeah. Hey, Justin. Hey, my name is Justin. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Um, what's this symbol? That's. Um, that's the mayonnaise. <laughs> it's like... Well, I noticed, like, nice. this one definitely sticks out when you guys play, because it's really, really dark, and it has, like, a really, like, almost China, like, type crash to it when you hit it really hard. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, where... I, it, what brand yeah. is it? Is it... It's, it's actually Turkish. That's the it's brand, okay. It's not only okay. a Turkish symbol, that's the name of I the see. brand. I see. In fact, um... Yeah, very nice. I mean, it sounds great besides just looking cool the way they. Yeah, it's very interesting lathing that they've done or whatever that is. I mean, how they, that's not lathe, this is hammered. Yeah, it is hammered, and however they, they painted it with the stripes. Uh, yeah, very versatile symbol. Uh, it's nice and light if you ever need to, like, ride on it. Uh -huh. it's like, Beautiful dark like crash yeah. to it. So uh, yeah, I like this symbol a lot. Very interesting. Um, end up crashing it a lot more um, than than just playing on it because it is it is it does get pretty washy. Is it intended to be a ride, or is it just whatever? It's probably intended to be a ride. Yeah. yeah. What about this one? Is this like a vintage uh, Zildjian or something over here? Uh, yes, it is, in fact. From, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Uh, Ten points. 60s. 
I got it. It had uh, the guy had already drilled the rivet holes into it, mm -hmm. which is fine. It's uh, useful if I ever want to put them in. But uh, yes, yeah, this thing is great too. Just just straight old school sound. Yeah. Peter, uh, you're an awesome bassist. I do. Just like thought it. I'd tell you that. <laughs> Uh, what, what do you use here? What is this bass? This is a Warwick four string rock bass. Um, got it about just about 10 years ago. Uh -huh. It finally conked out the electronics about six months ago. Really like disastrously. Like, like there was like a recording date where it was making a bunch of noise and, and I was like, this is like a new chord, you know, new, new batteries. It's active. Oh, it's active. I couldn't figure it out. And then it, it just like broke. First time that anything like that happened to me. So I brought it into the shop and then had them install a new uh, onboard preamp for the Octave uh -huh. EQing, and now it's like back in action. Well, all right. For, I, I told them I want another decade out of it. Is so. it the same pickups, or do they have to replace those? No, these yeah, these are. These oh, are, so it's just the preamp with bad or something that was in it before. Yeah, or? and they just gutted it and then re, like rewired and resoldered everything. So uh -huh. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really cool. It sounds yeah. great. Um, what about your amp? Is that, yeah. is that an orange <laughs> this bass is, amp? So this is actually a guitar. guitar it's a guitar amp, yeah. So I got it. I had a, like a Les Paul Studio. Still have it for a while. And uh -huh. like, um, in general now, I like more prefer like Janae's type of guitar to play on just feels better for someone like me. But this that's why I got this, like to play guitar on. Uh -huh. And then I got sick of the studio, like the way it felt and how heavy it was and how it didn't have really great tone at the end of the day. And so I started playing bass on this and it like nothing went wrong. So I just kept doing it, you know? Yeah. And um so I I sometimes gig with this, usually for this band, I mean, in New York, I'll just play whatever's around, you know. Does it have enough low end to, to you know, for to do bass and it, it holds up on the lows? Yeah. The thing is, so this is a custom cabinet. Oh, okay. Uh, so it, get, it, it like, gives its, you know, it get, the signal goes through here. This has its own character, too, and it's deeper. Right. Plus, with this, I can, I can get, like, some really deep uh -huh. and boomy sound. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's more than enough to handle whatever I throw at it. And then the extra option of having some some weird fuzz coming in. Here's some of that. Let's turn this down. So, All right. this is my instrument. <laughs> Thanks for talking. Yeah, thank you. Later. <laughs> Big Figment. What's up? Big! <laughs> Figment! <laughs>